What is up, YouTube? Or whoever is watching. This is another Super Geeks production. Today I'm going to talk to you about neon lighting. This is the first tutorial of probably a couple hundred tutorials I'll make on my background in electronics. Not just my background in electronics, I'll be sharing you the things I've learned from others. As well as things I've learned from all the books I've had to read and then the hands on. Uh, so let's talk about neon lights. Neon lights look like this. Pretty. But this is glass. How the heck do they burn and make glass? Bend. And then how do they put a gas in it to make it glow? Pretty cool. Well, my friends, this is what I'm here for. Neon lights are basically for sake of putting information together in your head to see what I'm talking about. Is lightning in a bottle, okay? It's the way it is. It's the exact same thing as lightning. It's low pressure on one end, high pressure on the other, and then a mixture of gases to create some type of medium for the discharge to take place. Same exact thing as a neon light. Well, the low pressure inside of the tubing charges the gases inside through electricity, with electricity. It doesn't just charge it because. Um, most neon lights, well, I'll say it like this. All neon lights have phosphorus in them. Imagine this little piece of paper being a piece of phosphor. I'm going to take a laser, you know, like your little red dot laser thing. I'm going to take one of those, but with a white dot. Or actually any color. It could be red. And I'm just going to shine it on one point on here. Well, since this is phosphor, this whole thing is going to light up. Boom! Like a light. You're not going to see a dot from the laser. Why is that? Well, phosphorus has a pretty unique intrinsic property that makes all of its cells mirror each other. This is why it's used in your TV. Because the electron gun in your CRT, if you have a CRT, there's things now, okay, LCD, plasma, LED TV, whatever. When the crap came out, there was something in TVs called an electron gun. It basically shot a ray of electrons into a shadow mask and then into your your your, your actual TV screen where the phosphorus is at with the pixel. Each pixel has a red, green, and blue area on it. And the shadow mask is involved so that the electron gun doesn't shoot at, let's say, a red pixel and a green pixel totally different areas. That would make the picture all um, pretty much fuzzy. It wouldn't focus. So, there's two gases out there that are commonly used to, in neon lighting. One of them is mercury vapor. The other one is argon. Most neon lights, pink and red and white, they use just a little bit of mercury vapor and phosphorus. Now it's pretty neat how this works because the lightning in the bottle gives the phosphorus and the vapor of the gas an ability to illuminate. So how does that work? Okay, well before I tell you exactly how it works, I'm going to tell you what colors can be derived from what type of gas. A neon gas in a blue it, well, okay, let's take a blue piece of glass, a blue one, okay, and let's blow it. We're going to blow it and we're going to make a cool design. Okay, we're going to cap off one end with another piece of glass or an electrode, and we're going to put a little bit of phosphorus in it, just a tad. Neon gas and phosphorus in a blue, blue piece of glass. Guess what color that makes? card 
It's not the obvious. The answer is pink. A blue piece of glass with phosphorus and a little bit of mercury vapor in it. A little bit. We'll make a pink neon light. Pretty cool, huh? A white phosphorus vapor with a clear piece of glass makes, come on, white. Very, very much similar to the color of your fluorescent lights. Okay? So, if you have pure neon, which is very rare, and it's not rare for neon shops to have, but it's rare to find a neon light because it only makes one color. A pure phosphorus, a phosphorus coating on, the, uh, on a clear light with a little bit of pure neon, like I said, not 100%, not 50% neon, no mixture, just pure neon, phosphorus. Guess what color that makes? Ruby red. It's true. Now, you can use the flame to create tubes just like they do to make glass. And they blow vases, and they, being glass makers, can do a lot of things with heat and a straw and some air. And of course, skill. So, when they make these neon lights, what are the voltages required to, let's just say, turn on the, the neon light? Give it enough go, amps and voltage, to start the reaction between the phosphorus coating on the, in the inside of the tube and the gas inside. Well, most neon lights take up upwards of about 15,000 volts just to turn on. But here's a cool thing. The phosphorus, once it's illuminated and the cycle has started between the reaction of the gas that's in it, whatever it is, argon, phosphorus, or argon, mercury, vapor, or pure neon, will not require 15,000 volts to stay on. And this is the whole reason neon is used. Because neon has a coefficient voltage temperature of 600 volts. This means that it's going to take 15,000 to turn on just real quick. You'll even feel a little bit of static on the outside of the light. Don't be around them when they turn on. That's when you can hurt yourself a lot. Well, you don't really you don't want to be touching them when they're on either. But so it starts with 15,000 volts, about a half a second. Comes on, drops down to 600 volts DC on the rail of the DC transformer that's, power, that's powering it. So when they get this glass and they put the phosphorus inside and then the gas, how does that hold in there? Well, before those steps, there's something called vacuuming and bombarding. When you vacuum out everything, you're going to vacuum out all the air of the hose, tube, piece of glass, so that it'll be extremely clean so that the phosphorus on the inside will not be moved around because it has to be a coat. If there's any one blank spot on that phosphorus tube, it will not illuminate, okay? So just imagine taking the tube apart, rubbing your finger on the inside, putting the electrode back. Forget the idea that you're going to remove all the gas and the vapor. Just imagine you could do that in a vacuum yourself and there would be no leakage. Well they still wouldn't turn on. It has to have a complete path, just like a series circuit, in order to use Kershaw's voltage law. Voltage in equals voltage out. Um, neon lights are very efficient resistors as well. And also, they're pretty. I don't say that word much, but they're pretty cool, that is. Now, one more thing about bombarding. When they bombard, what that means is you got a big flame. <sighs> flame, got a piece of glass. It's already been vacuumed. The phosphorus has already been put in it. But when they bombard it, they're heating it up and applying a little bit of neon inside of it, the neon gas that turns it on. Mercury vapor, argon, or pure neon, or a mixture of the three.